Russell Gilbrook. Yes. Welcome to Bearded.tv, the Polish drummer's website. Fantastic. And we are catching up with you at Drumfest Opole, Poland. We are. And uh, um, you are here to do a clinic and to judge the contestants. That's right. Uh, let's talk about your approach to clinics mm. first. What do you think is, is the most important um, message you want to convey to the people who come to you? Um, it's basically the, um, the understanding of information. Because if you don't understand something, you can't practice it properly. Mm. And if you don't get given the correct information, you don't know what it is you're supposed to be practicing. So I always think clinics should be about, you know, you, you, you're there to try and inspire people, but you're also there to be uh, given the correct information in simple terms of the real drumming, um, not practicing 17, 16 and twirling your sticks and doing all that because at the end of the day everyone, everyone wants to try and play grooves better and um, try and play for the music for the, uh, the, the band that you're in and so any little tips that you can give to help them do that so the next time they practice or do a gig um, it's going to be better because you, you should always try and get better. Yeah. That's what I've noticed also watching your clips on YouTube, mm. the instructional stuff you do. It's not about God knows what, it's about the real simple real stuff, you know, the practical yeah. elements of it. Well, I thought that when I started doing that stuff, it was mainly, you know, I tour 27 countries a year, yeah. roughly. Um, and all the stuff that I'm doing, you know, I'm doing it to earn a living and I'm doing it real. So that's the stuff I want people to get better at because they're not actually better than that. They said they're practicing 17, 16, 12, clave and doing, doing all this stuff and forgetting the real stuff right. that makes them actually better musicians, right. you know, and uh, it's priori prioritizing uh, their practice schedules better as mm. well, you know. Right. Do you talk about sound as well at your clinics, tuning, things I, like I, that? I tend to, I like the audience to tell me what sort of clinic to do because every audience is different and so I have a a little bit of a format that I do um, but if if people ask me for, about tuning then I start to tell them about it and uh, if they ask about recordings and I go through the whole lot but I usually wait for the audience to tell me which direction my clinic should go right. in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, of course you know sound is everything of course and uh, I'm not I don't I'm not really fanatical about how you hold the sticks I think if you're if you're struggling with an element of speed, power, or control, you have to look at the grip. Of course we do, but at the end of the day, the sound is the most important thing. True. Yeah. instruments as well yes so what do you use what's your gear Sakai drums 
pasty cymbals, um, aquarium drum heads, and um, pelwood drumsticks. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's about representing yourself. When you start getting good as a musician, you should have your own identity. And your instrument is supposed to be representing your identity. So it's, it's, it's a, a very important thing that people choose the right skins, the right sticks to complement their personality and their individuality. Right, yes. Okay, symbol choice, that's mm. quite a complex thing. So what models have you actually chosen? Um, well, with Heap, I tend to use the Alphas. Um, because the durability and they just work well within the context of playing the classic rock stuff so I need symbols for that when I'm doing other bits and pieces the more funky bluesy quieter stuff I use the dark energies I just love the dry sound of them uh, and obviously they're, they're more musical but uh, they're not quite as durable but uh, I don't hit them as hard so they work nicely for that but um, if I'm doing recordings and stuff I'll always take in say three or four rides, three or four different sets of hi-hats. The, the, the crashes tend to stay what they are, but it's the ride and the, and the hi-hats that obviously yeah. you know, make a big difference. True, yeah, yeah. right. Okay, skins, uh, clear ones, coated ones? I tend to change every few months to give right. my ears a different yeah. headspace on coated. I don't prefer one over the other. Mm. Um, but I am a big fan of the uh, False Tens Aquarium. I do feel as though that particular skin does in fact draw out the meat of the shell, mm. which is rather good. And the high energy on the stair, it is the best stair drum head in the world, that's a fact. I used to play other uh, skins and stuff, but I hit very, very hard and I can get 40 shows out of one stair drum head. But with other heads, I'll probably get six songs. I don't even get a gig. Okay. So that is the king of um, heads for me, as far as the snare drum is concerned. Um, and on the bass drum, I tend to use a super kick one, sometimes super kick two, depending on um, how I feel really. I don't change heads that often. My, my drum tech will only change the head if we can't tune it or it's literally battered. I don't believe in new heads too often. Um, if, it, if, it sounds, yeah, like if, if, if it sounds good, yeah. stay on. <laughs> right, yeah. 